Welcome, Dolores. Please sit down. You look terrific. Thank you. Absolutely terrific. The last time we were talking on this show, um, it was after the huge success of your first album, right? Yeah, that's right. Were you worried about the second one, that it wouldn't do as well? Um, no, not really worried. I suppose um, I had a lot of confidence in it. I knew that the material was better, but I know that it's always kind of a challenge to bring out that like, second album. Second album's the worrying yeah, one, isn't it? Yeah, but we're over it now. It's out there. And it's actually doing a lot better than the first one. So. It's, is it really? It's yeah, doing a lot better yeah, than the first it's, one? It's, it's, um, it went to number one in Australia, and it's number one in Germany and Belgium at the moment. And stuff. Yeah. Has, has the whole thing of superstardom begun to uh, oppress you yet, you know, whether it's the press or the fans or just the, the, the recognition factor? Um, no, it's, it's, sometimes it's hard, like, because at the end of the day, you're, you're just a human being, you know, and if you get sick and you take time out, you have to kind of, I don't know, there's so many people kind of saying, where were you? And, you know, you say, well, I was sick, my leg was sore, or whatever, like, and it's just, um, it's kind of hard to let people down, but at the end of the day, you have to put your health first, and you have to know where to draw the line. And take your health break, comes first. Know. Tell me about the whole cranberry phenomenon, though. Is it true that you banned cranberry sauce in your house at Christmas? That, oh, um, no, we never really had it in our house. Kind of more of a bacon and cabbage household, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's spots, you know? So, cranberry sauce is a bit foreign to my family. Really. Yeah, no, there was this story in one of the papers that, you know, you were so sort of cranberried out of it that yeah. you wanted no cranberry sauce in the turkey at Christmas. No, it was really nice, actually, because there wasn't much talk about it at home at Christmas. It was, it was pretty quiet. Family Christmas. It was a real family Christmas. It was yeah. nice. Um, Lovely Christmas, but a lot of the fans were a bit disappointed. Will you explain yeah. to us exactly <coughs> about the knee injury, when it happened, and how bad it got? Well, I wore my mini skirt to display my scar. Um, like I've, I've got a, quite a big scar here, and I've got one here. And I've got four steel screws in there and a fibreglass ligament. So um, my leg's still very kind of skinny and weak, and there's no muscle. So sometimes it gets really sore because of the pressure on the joint because I don't have the muscles to support it. So this it, was know? the cruciate ligament? Yeah, it's yeah, the Now cruciate everyone knows one. about the cruciate ligament because Niall Quinn, the, yeah. the Ireland um, goal scorer and Manchester City uh, you, player, you, he had it. Same injury, and it yeah. took him a good nine months, I think, to, to recover with yeah. intensive physiotherapy. And Gaza had it as well. I don't know physio at all because on tour it's just too hard, you know. Like you're so busy with gigs and sound checks and stuff that I don't do physio and then it just acted up over Christmas, it got really sore. And yeah. was there any particular thing that happened to it? To, to well, uh, I was in Disneyland and I kind of bumped it getting off a ride, so it was kind of sore. And I reckon just all the touring and jumping around, because you know, you, you go on stage and we were just out for about, I suppose about six months on tour, and all the jumping around on stage and suddenly you stop. And it's, it's like if you're going to the gym and you suddenly stop working out and it got really sore. So when I came back to Ireland, I knew that I really couldn't perform that well, you know, without resting it and doing some physio. You'd have to actually sit on a stool on the stage, which is not your act, right? Yeah, and it would just be too sore. I wouldn't really be able to enjoy myself. Yeah. And um, give it the best. When the decision was made, how tough was it to make that decision to pull the gigs? Oh, well, it's really hard to make the decision to pull any gigs, but I suppose you think that, you know, um, the people in Ireland would understand and accept the fact that you're, you're sick. I think everybody here knew that. I had the operation and stuff. And I mean, they're just postponed. They're rescheduled for June. Like, so um, hopefully in June it'll be well worth waiting for, you know? Yeah. So. Um, you got a little hassle from the press, though, because you were reported as having been seen out shopping. And yeah. I mean, they expected that if your leg was sore, that She's that's the kind of thing you couldn't do. in a bedroom and go mental, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's like, a, I mean, you know, it's like a leg injury. You can walk. But there's a difference between walking and performing, you know, a big difference. And, yeah. and a, lo a lot of people kind of distorted things, you know, a lot of the press. But I think it's a kind of a typical thing that happens to bands and people who are successful. You got lots, most people are on your side and then you get what they call a backlash. And I that's suppose what's happened that's, to you now. I suppose we got one, a mild little one over Christmas, like, and uh, I suppose that's just the way it is, you know, it's the ins and outs of the business, the entertainment yeah. and, business. And did they come to you at home? And yeah, knock on the yeah. Doors a couple and of people arrived at the door and stuff, and I'd be like in my pyjamas after getting up, go away, you know, shoo, you know, and they'd be like just... Because you're know. not a superstar at home. No, I'm a wife. <laughs> I'm, a car I'm a, an Irish yeah. girl, you know. Yeah. Um, I was talking on the radio that when you were getting married on the morning of your, your wedding, before you headed off. Um, how has married life been treating you? That's great. It's really mm. nice. I mean, well, I've been really busy on tour, so... We haven't been like a married couple, whoopily, like kind of thing. We've been really busy. So, um, but when we get together, it's great. It's like, you know, we get really into the cooking and the husband and wife vibe, you know. 
and it's nice, but you know, you don't get enough of it really, you know. But you know, it's kind of, I'm young and I might as well go with the career, you know, and keep aiming for higher and higher, you know, and until I'm happy with what I've achieved yeah, in my I'm, life. I'm you know? wondering exactly what this husband and wife vibe is. I don't know. I, I think I've achieved it's it. Like, but <laughs> it's like him making you breakfast in bed and, you know, oh. taking your shoes off for you. And yeah, I think I've achieved that all right. all Yeah, that, I've done all that. Those things. Kind of things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get those on tour too much. <laughs> I'm sure you don't. And w what about family? I know you're mad about kids. I love kids, yeah. Um, me? Uh, not for a while, I suppose. Um, I, um, it's kind of a big thing for a girl because you kind of get all, you know, and you have to go away. I mean, having this operation was enough for me and I'm kind of scared of the idea of giving birth, so... You know. It's going to be a while. <laughs> It'll be a while. But yeah. when you start, how many do you think you'll want to have? Oh, nine or ten of them. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of them. Uh, yeah. Trying to talk my husband into it, you know, telling him the more the merrier, you know. Yeah, they, they, the, the older ones will raise the young ones and that sort of thing. That's it, yeah. yeah. Big families. Does he come from a big family, Don? Yeah, he's got, um, I suppose, I think just six or seven. So he knows the vibe. Yeah. The family life vibe. Yeah, he's into family too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where are you going to live, by the way? We're, we, just, we were just granted our plan and permission to build down in Kerry, so we're going to go ahead and build a home there, you know. And it gets easier the more we go back to, you know, the south because people just get more relaxed about seeing you, you know. And I, I like, to, you know, I don't want to be ab not be able to go shopping and push a trolley around in Quinsworth and Duns and be normal. So I insist on going out and be normal, and sometimes people ask you for autographs, and you just give them to them, and sometimes people just leave you alone, you know. But the more and they see of you, easier, the more relaxed they're going to be gets, about it. Yeah. It's like yeah. that, you know. And uh, what's your lifestyle on, on the road? I mean, you're now a huge band in terms yeah. of popularity. Uh, I mean, is it all sort of limo here, limo there? Book um, 40 hotel rooms every time you check into a town? <laughs> There's a lot of hotel rooms and limos and all that kind of stuff, all right, but I mean... Uh, I don't know, like limos are cheap in America anyway. <laughs> I suppose that's why they give them to us. Um, it's very busy. It's like, you know, I get up and, I, and usually I try to go to the gym every day and work with my leg a bit, seeing as I'm not doing physio. And then, you know, you got a sound check every day. You usually got an interview. And then you got to go back, makeup, clothes, performance, onto the bus and on the bus. Then usually sleep in a bunk from midnight till about seven. And at seven you check in to a hotel on your next destination, you know, you travel mm -hmm. overnight every night, so, and then you, you just, you know, yeah, it's well, like that, it's pretty strange. you're working out every morning with your knee and so on, do you think it'll ever be right? I mean, or have you done damage to yourself that, that will actually come against you maybe when you're older? Oh, I'll probably have arthritis and stuff, but that's okay, I would have probably had it anyway, my granny has and stuff. Your granny has it? Yeah, it's in the family, so it's okay. <laughs> does your, does your, is that on your mother's side or your father's side? My mother's side. Yeah, your mother's in the audience, is she yeah. all right? Does she she's have any fine. arthritis? No, she's none yet. Oh, where has she gone? Down there. Are you all right? Or do you have any arthritis at all? <laughs> has she changed at all since she became a superstar? Not at all, no. She's the same Dolores the whole time. No, she's My hair do. Oh, what do you think of the hair do? Do you like it? Yeah, I love that one. As distinct from? I don't, I don't like the red. <laughs> she's just red. They say, like they say that red is on Loki, supposed to be. First thing in the morning. <laughs> There's is that right? rumour about right. it, yeah. <laughs> All right, you must be very proud of her anyway for all, oh, all, all she's done. Yeah. Do you yeah sometimes, she's a great girl. Do you sometimes pinch yourself, Dolores, and wonder, you know, how it all happened? I mean, are you still surprised at your success? Um, no, not really, because it happened so slowly and stuff, and I really enjoy it, and I think it's the most important thing to... Sometimes it can get you down, because sometimes people say the nastiest things, you know? Sometimes people say the most hurtful things about you and take things out of context and try to misrepresent you. And that's, that's nasty and stuff, but it's the career I've chosen and it's one of those things I've got to accept, you know. What about stories that have been floating around that you want to go solo? Any truth in those? <laughs> uh, no. None whatever? I, you know, I've got three great guys in the band who really look after me. I mean, if the pressure gets too much for me, I always, I'm like, lads, they, you know, they said this about me in the paper and they're like, we'll burst their heads, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they kick their heads in or something, you know. And like to mind them, you know, just that okay. Type of stuff. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, Paul from Markle has been on. Tell Dolores her fans will be more eager to see you by June, so don't oh, worry thanks. about it. Hundreds of fans in the southwest can't wait. Anne O'Neill from Fox Rock. Well done to Dolores for coming on to explain. Her Irish fans obviously mean a lot to her. Me too. Uh, the Cullens from Sandy Mount. The Cranberries are quite simply the best. Tell them they leave everyone, including you two, standing. Oh, so there's there's lovely. an accolade. Eh? Thank you. Um, finally. George, I should ask you, what's, um, what's next? I mean, where are you going to from here? When are you next? Uh... Well, we're, um, 
back to London for some press and stuff. Some um, exporting something with the Rolling Stone and stuff at the moment. Some press, and then we go out to Germany. We do some gigs there where the album's number one, so that's going to be great. And then we go to Spain and around Europe, and then we go and we do MTV Unplugged in February in New York. Then we go to Australia for a while, Japan, America, and then we get a week off. And, and I think then we're doing here. European dates with REM and some. I think we're doing some uh, festivals. We're not sure yet. Nothing right. is really confident. And I reckon you guys summer. will be top of the bill. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully you will. <laughs> yeah. Look, it couldn't happen to a nicer person. Dolores, thanks, thanks very much. Nice seeing you again. Thanks. Dolores Arrivin at the Cambridge. Thank you very much, please.